Okay, so today we're going to look at simple interest. Simple interest is easy interest. The formula is easy, but also the way interest gets applied is very simple. The other kind of interest that we'll be looking at soon will be compound interest. But now we're going to look at simple interest, and I need to let you know going in. If you make an investment with simple interest, then they need to set the rate of what they're going to pay for simple interest in such a way as to make it attractive for you to invest. If it doesn't make you enough money compared to other options that you have that are about as risky, no one's going to put their money in here and they need to raise the interest rates. And that's just what the market does. So the interest rates that you see in compound interest will not match perfectly with what you see with simple interest because they're competing with each other and they work in different ways. Simple interest is used on something called bonds. I will go over more of this later on in the course, but right now I want to let you know that with bonds what happens is Let's say you want to invest with a company, then you would buy stock and you'd become part owner of the company, a small part in most cases, but then you might lose all that money. Luckily, if the company owes a lot of money and you're a stockholder, they don't come and say, oh, wow, we did so terribly, you need to give us another $200 right now. You can only lose what you invested, but you can lose what's called your principal, within, and it ends with P-A-L, like the PAL um, version of principal when we're spelling it, but here's the story. When you go and buy a bond, what happens is you loan the company your money. You loan them your $1,000. If it's a 10% annual bond that's gonna go over 10 years, they're gonna pay you 10% of the $1,000 every single year. So first year you get 100, next year you get 100, next year you get 100, until 10 years is up. And then what's happened is that your loan will be called matured, it reads its date of maturity, and then you get all of your original money back as well. But all you did was loan them the money if they take your $1,000 and they make it worth a million dollars, you're gonna get back your $100 a year in interest, and at the end, you're gonna get your 1,000. If you had invested that money in the stock and it became worth a million dollars, you'd get your million dollars. But you were risking that you lose it if the company doesn't do so well. So this is what they do for bonds, is they use simple interest. You might think, oh, my savings account is simple interest or my CD is simple interest. No, those are compound interest. But simple interest is what's used in this bond situation where they just take care of you every period. And in this case, every year, they send you a check. And you get that check. Now, it might sound pretty good. You get, send in $1,000, and over 10 years, they keep sending you 100 And at the end of 10 years, you got your 1000 back. And you're like, oh, okay, we finally broke even. And then on one day, you get all your original 1000 back. So that's what simple interest is going to run like. I want to give you the formulas for working with it. But here's the key that you need to know. Simple interest... determines each interest payment based on the amount of your initial investment. So the first amount of money you put in is what they do determine how much your payments of interest will be, and it doesn't get bigger over time. It's $100 every year instead of doing the other thing, which is when you get to let it multiply and grow, and it grows slowly at first and a lot at the end, and that's called compounding. This does not have that. Your initial investment is called your principal. Now, the formula for this interest is interest equals principal. So how much money you loan them times the rate that they're 10% in this case times the time. So then we come out of here with I equals PRT. Now I want to show you using division how we can isolate each of these individual variables. So we'll get other formulas, but this is what it's based on. The total amount of interest you get is equal to the principal you put in times the rate you get times how long it's in there. And if this is the annual rate, then that's the number of years that it's in. And it doesn't really matter how frequently they pay simple interest because it's all going to come out the same. It's based on how much you put in. And so a lot of times we'll say, let's put an annual rate here, and this will be the number of years, and if it needs a decimal, we'll use a decimal. But you want to know that Interest is I, principal is P, 
rate is r and time is t. This is simple interest only. Okay, and always what we have with this is now the account balance is going to be equal to your principal plus interest. What's your account worth? Well, up to that moment, it's worth what you put in plus what you got in interest. So if you just tell them, you know what, take the $100 each year and put it in cash in my safe deposit box right there at your bank, that's kind of like what happens. And then at the end of the time, you can go in and pick up your money. Or if after three years, like, oh man, I need that 300, you go in, open your safe deposit box and you go spend the interest. But with a situation where we're doing a bond, you can't go get your principal back. Okay. So the period, the APR, this is not A times P times R, this is A period, P period, R, is the annual, which means once a year, percentage, which means over 100, rate. There you go, APR. That's what you're often going to hear when they advertise interest. What's the APR? What's the annual percentage rate of this interest? So this is gonna become an issue we're gonna to have to deal with down the road when interest is paid in a compound fashion, then it matters if you get paid monthly or quarterly or every week or every day or whatever other ways they do it. But when you're doing simple interest, it's really just how much did you put in, what are you getting paid each year, how many years, multiply, multiply, multiply. Now, if I wanted to take this and do some other things, I could take my A equals PRT and say, you know, I need to isolate P, so let me divide both sides by RT and I hope you'll be able to do that. And you'll be able to see that P equals I over RT. I can take my I equals PRT. And if I wanted to determine my R, I would divide both sides by PT. And we'll get these out of here. And we're going to get that R equals I over PT. And finally, I equals PRT and we want to get the T alone, we're going to divide each side by P and R, P and R, and we're going to get the time equals total interest divided by P and R. So those are all possibilities of what we're going to have to do. You can find each individual one that you need, or you can plug in the three values that you have. If you're looking for I, you'll go ahead and multiply them, and if you're looking for anything else, you'll start with I, you'll divide by the other two. R goes in as the rate that's going in actively per period. So when you want to do it, if it's 10% interest, you can't put a 10 there. You might say, oh, 10%, 0.10, that's accurate and that'll work. Or put your 10 in over 100 and that'll make 1 tenth and put it to work. But when they describe it for you as a percent, I always tell people percents are good for the news, right? If we say 25% uh, of the students at Norwalk take some form of public transit to get to campus, people are like, all right, I don't love math, but 25%, I'll hear you out. If they didn't have percents, they would have to say it like this. 0.25 of each individual Norwalk student comes to, work, comes to campus on public transit, which means like each individual person is sending a quarter of their body to work on the bus or something like that. That's crazy. So instead, we'll tell you how many out of 100 and it doesn't tend to have decimals leading it off, and it doesn't make you think that we're dealing with a fraction of a person. Instead, we're dealing with a fraction of a group out of 100. So percent is easier for people to consume, and so percents are used like that, but when they're getting to work, they should be put back to being fractions and get to it. So now I've got a couple questions here that I wanna ask. I'm gonna let you know that I have $12,000 invested that's my principal at 3% APR okay and the questions come out like this how much interest do I earn over we have these different amounts of time. A, one year. B, 
seven years. And C, five months. Now to get somewhat of a demonstration of how these different isolations work, I would direct you to the homework for this section and look at the way that I picked some of the homework problems out and said, okay, look what we got to isolate and solve for. So I'm not going to pile them all in here. This is really letting you know that's where you go and you try the homework. If it works out for you, great. If not, then you can dive into the homework section and see how it goes. But here's what's going on. This is going to be that my interest is equal to. Now, all three times, I'm starting with $12,000. So I'm going to go ahead and put in $12,000. It includes the dollar sign. And that will bring the dollar sign all the way across as I do my work. So my answer will also be in how many dollars I make in interest. Times. So I'll put my star here for multiplication. Principal done. Rate 3% for the year. So I'm going to put in my 3. And I'm going to divide by 100. That's 3 over 100, or 3 divided by 100, also known as 0 0.03. But it is not 0 0.03 and then divided by 100. That'll make it too small. So this is me representing 3%. When I have a percent, I put it over 100. I divide it by 100. So there's my 3%. Times. And now I have T for each one of these. The amount of time each one is in the investment. So on this one... The first one is one year, and this is an annual percentage rate, so three is perfect the way it is. And I'm figuring out how many years was that. It was one year, so I'm going to multiply by one. And we'll come out of here with what that makes. And what we find is 12,000 times three divided by 100 gets me $360. So for that year, if I kept the money in, and maybe I agreed to just do it for a year at the end, I'd have $360. That's my 3% of the 12,000 and at the end of the year I could go pick up my $360 of interest and if I'm all done with it I'll also take my 12,000 home. Now on this one they have seven years. So it's going to be the same multiplication but it's going to be seven times as much and it's going to be $2,520 but it takes me seven years to get there. But if I let that money pile up in a drawer each time I get the check, say I get a check every year, I put the check in the drawer, or maybe I get the cash and I put the cash in the drawer, and that's what winds up in the drawer. When my seven years is up, I have that, and I get back my $7. Now what if I agree to just do this for five months? Five months. I can't multiply this by five and get over $1,500, because five months is less than a full year. Five months is a fraction of a year, so I need to create that fraction. And what that is, is it's 5 out of 12. It's 5 of the months when 12 make up a full year, so I make the fraction of 5 over 12, 5 over 12. What that turns out to be, if you look at this year, you make $360 for a year, and there are 12 months in a year, that means I'm going to get $30 each month, and I'm in there 5 months. So that's what this will wind up getting for me if I do my 12,000 times 3 divided by 100, for that's 3%, times 5 divided by 12 for the fractional amount of years that I did. I'll see that I did 5 months at $30 a month, and this will turn out to be $150. But you need to recognize that the APR is a percentage, and that percentage is generally for the year. When you're looking at a periodic interest rate, we'll see it in the future, that what we're going to do is we're going to take that APR and we're immediately going to divide it by 100 because of the percent. And I will say that. I'll have, you know, 7.2%. 7.2 divide by 100 because of percent. And then more words will follow. When we get into times when the periods matter per year, I'll say divided by 12 for months or divided by 52 for weeks or whatever it is because we're going to need the periodic interest rate. Right now, we're just looking at the annual in interest rate in play and we may have a fraction or decimal for how many years we work with it.